For this video I want to show a terminal emulator I've been working on. So this is a, well the VIC normally has 22 columns but uh, here you can see that I've configured the screen to 27 columns because I'm using a PAL machine and um, it's actually creating a virtual 80 column screen. So this is connecting to Udo Monk's Z80 pack CPM emulator which is a wonderful CPM emulator if you haven't seen it before and it's giving a window into a, a virtual 80 column screen. So you can see here that we're only displaying 27 columns but if I hit F3 then we can scroll along along the uh, screen. So we can see the full extent of the 80 column screen. And then uh, we can also have an auto align mode. So if I press F2 and then have a look at uh, some screen, you can see that it's moving with the cursor. At the moment, the uh, emulator supports, uh, well, partially supports Kpro2 terminal commands and hence also ADM3A. And if I have a look at uh, something like Turbo Pascal, which uses these codes, I'll just turn off the auto align a second because uh, otherwise it gets a bit confusing as it's switching back and forth. So if I start Turbo Pascal and then uh, press F2 again to auto align with the cursor, so the cursor's here. And then uh, we'll, we'll edit a file to see what this is like. And there you are, you can see how the screen moved with the cursor there. So if I edit a file, so Turbo Pascal uses uh, word star style commands, uh, key presses, so we can go down. The mode is flicking back and forth, and that's because it's trying to update the header bar up here each time, and uh, that's moving the cursor. So if I just click on F1, which will look at the first pane, and then we can scroll up and down. Well, we can scroll down like this. We can scroll down a page at a time. And um, what else can we do? If we could scroll along and have a look at a longer line, just to show the uh, the paging going back and forth. Okay, well, this line's a bit longer. So we have a look at that. F2, and there we are. So, there you are. So we're accessing uh, an 80 column screen, but through a 27 column window. So uh, that works quite well. It, perfectly usable. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does mean that uh, on the VIC, with, a term, with this terminal emulator, we can emulate 80 columns without actually using an alternative font. So uh, I've shown in the past 40 columns, 64 columns, even 80 columns. Uh, the problem with, the, with those are though that, well, I was reminded recently of using an old machine, you are using an old monitor more to the point, or an old television, uh, that actually the display could be really quite bad sometimes. It could be quite hard to see. So although on a modern display, it, you know, we can do something with uh, 40 columns or 64 columns, even 80 columns, uh, if, uh, if you're patient and uh, at a push. But realistically, in the past, it would have been even more difficult. It would, just wouldn't have been comfortable. So I wanted to see what I could do with using the, just the standard character font of the VIC, but with this sliding window. If I come out of Turbo Pascal, then I want to demonstrate uh, QL. So if I go to this drive, I've configured QL on this drive, on this user of this drive, to uh, work with the uh, Kpro2. If you haven't used QL before, it's a great little text viewer. Uh, this is a list of files on that drive, and then we can pick one uh, using the number next to it. So if I pick uh, number 5, which is QL41.azm, so if I put F2, then it's moving with the cursor, but that's a bit chaotic. It's not really something you'd want to use whilst you're viewing things. It's more as you're typing things that you would want to use the uh, auto align. But if I go like that, so I've moved to the first screen, and if I just press enter, and then we'll page down each line at a time. And then we can go along and have a look at the line, the longer lines like this with F1, F3, F5, F7. And if we really wanted to, we could press F2 and it would follow the uh, cursor, but as I say, you probably wouldn't want to do that uh, when you're just viewing things. So I'll come out of that and uh, we'll have a go using Ed. So if I created a file, uh, let's call it hello.txt, and then we'll start the text. The um, You might see the character code there, 255 semicolon 255 those that's just because well it's because it's configured for a vt100 uh, because that's what z80 pack expect but uh, it just creates a bit of screen noise it doesn't really alter anything so if i start a new line uh, press f2 so we follow the cursor there you are 
You can see it's quite easy to follow the cursor and it just shifts along quite nicely. It's a bit like VicWriter if you've ever used uh, VicWriter. I've mentioned it uh, with um, a previous video about uh, Vic20 word processors. So it's that sort of scrolling screen, although this isn't as smooth. But I did it this way because I wanted it to be quick. So I'm, I'm more concerned with making sure that we don't drop anything when we're receiving text over the uh, RS232 port, which means we need to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Uh, we can't really allow any delay, otherwise it'll start dropping bytes. Could have used an alternative buffer, but just wanted to keep things simple. So in any case, um, that's that text. Uh, And I'll finish that with Control Z, save and exit, and then if I type SF1, and there we are, and then we can see our text. Well, as I say, this is very much a work in progress. Uh, the K-Pro terminal emulation is important to me because I think it's a great terminal emulation to use with CPM. Certainly better than VT100, I think, because often applications don't have enough room in their binaries for VT100 terminal codes. Uh, I'm planning to extend the K-Pro terminal emulation, or at least the uh, K-Pro codes, to add uh, not just the dim and highlight of later uh, later models, but I also want to add colour support in the same way that Atari extended VT52 uh, emulation to support colour. So I think that would be really good. And uh, and then um, when we're uh, altering binaries, then we can make use of that colour. So for example, Star Trek is a good example. Uh, that's something we could easily put colour in and it might look quite nice. We might even want to do it uh, with something like uh, SD. Uh, and then we can, uh, instead of just highlighting something, we can actually use a different colour for uh, some of the uh, things. So. Uh, uh, that's something uh, I'm looking at. I also want to add Petsky support so that I can connect to Commodore BBSs through this terminal. So I think that would be quite good. And I'm thinking of creating multiple versions with extra facilities. So at its base, I want to see if I can make it runnable on an unexpanded VIC. At the moment, it's uh, configured for an 8K expansion, but that's just whilst I'm uh, developing it. Uh, it would actually run on a 4K if I change the uh, start address, but the binary is not actually that big. But um, it's convenient for me to have it there at the moment. And for these extended versions, I've got a few ideas in mind. Uh, one thing I want to add is the ability to download files using Xmode and perhaps upload them as well. Uh, I've also got an idea for an 80 column zoom out screen. That uh, well, I've got a little trick here that I've got in mind that might be able to work on an unexpanded system. So that's something I'm quite interested in and looking forward to uh, having a go at that and see if that works. And um, and that's it for now, but uh, it's a bit of a work in progress. Uh, I'll keep uh, up to date through releasing another video and at some point I'll write an article around it as well and release it on GitHub. But uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Uh, do have a look at some of our other videos and please subscribe.